Well, if you're out there and you're listening, we've been having some issues this morning getting things going. So uh, we changed computers because the audio wasn't working. So we have audio working, and now we don't know if our cameras are working, but we're just going to go with it anyways. Praise the Lord. So Kevin's working on it. Um, Joining me as always is Brother Andy Johns and our pastor and prophet, Don Evans. Thanks for bearing with us. This morning, and we have your questions that we answered, but we're going to go through them and give you the answers again. Praise the Lord. Jake from Southern California says, uh, <clears throat> I trust a talk with a prophet will be on. Your computer is the only way it seems to work anymore. Is there some way we can get it to do all it did do before? We know Brother Don was sick, but knowing him, he must be well now. We see three wars ready to start a full force. When will the church come back to being the real church? God promised Brother Don to be here for the rapture. Does that mean the website also? God bless you. Love, Jake, from Southern California. As far as I know, if I'm here, then the talk with the prophet will be here, unless the government removes us. If I'm here. <laughs> So that'll be a good question. Yeah, I'm I'm doing fine, doing better than I've done in years. God's touched me, and I'm doing very good. Amen. Well, there was some who wrote in and thought that most of the computer problems were spiritual. And that's very problem because you've experienced some problems with your computer at the house. That don't seem ordinary. True. I didn't know if he was asking the question. I thought, how do I know mine's not working at the house? Yeah, we've had some terrible battles at my house, too. But uh, we somehow David manages to keep them fixed. If he doesn't, we get Brian there and we get it fixed. And... <laughs> But it, it, I would think it was spiritual because the devil doesn't want us on. He doesn't want you people out there hearing what we know. And, I mean, we know things in the spirit realm that the average Christian has never gone that far in the spirit realm. They could have, but they haven't. Uh, and because they haven't gone that far, God hasn't developed them or they know things that others don't know. The Bible even tells you that. There's mysteries that some of us know and others don't know. And God's not going to teach others because they're not going to go to heaven in the first place. They think they are, but they're not headed that way. Hmm. Uh, his other question there, we see three wars ready to start full force. When will the church come back to being the real church? Well, now see that we get back to it, and it hasn't been that long. One of those wars is already going. Now, True. Afghanistan, that's going now. Right. Full blast. Wasn't going then, but we told you it would be going. Uh, we see these things <laughs> coming. Uh, there's other things that are coming. Uh, Russia is getting much, much bolder than she was. I mean. Russia and Biden don't get along at all. Uh, and he, they don't fear Biden because he doesn't seem to know how to run anything and come out right. And the leaders that he's got that are working for him didn't work for Trump. The, the ones that work for Trump don't work for Biden. True. Uh, Buddy Thornton from Georgia writes, listening to the spirit moving during the worship service, we are hearing some very strong warnings and yet no repentance. It seems to be a very bad spirit. I have a deliverance service and would come and minister deliverance to them if you want. The only thing holding us back from sending large amounts of money is three people at the moment. Please answer this question as it is important. Well, we have deliverance ministry too. But unless we have absolute proof and we can't see inside of closed doors and apartments, well, we don't have that capability. 
Uh, God can show us, and we believe God has told us, but there's nothing we can do about it. But one of these days we may see Ananias and Sapphira fulfilled in our church. I sure hope not in one way, uh, but we're doing everything we possibly can at the moment. Trust me, we, we know what's going on here. You know, the most important thing is not to get distracted in your eyes off of what God is trying to get us focused on. True. Because the devil's right. just there to distract you to get your eyes on the negative instead of what he wants to do. Very true. See, we, we, uh, people that are supposed to be here, where are you? I mean, God's talked to a whole bunch of you. Uh, God says you're coming, where are you? I mean, we got one that, man, is a treasure. We're glad he come. Amen. And the rest of you are going to be like him. We're really going to look forward to getting you here. Uh, we got jobs all over out here. I mean, you, you need a job? Man, uh, my great-great-granddaughter just changed jobs. Went from one to another because she doesn't want to wear a mask all day. And I don't blame her. She doesn't want to get the shots. That's up to her. And... Uh, she got a $3 an hour raise just changing jobs. <laughs> Amen. Uh, they're offering more money out there to work all the while. Uh, we have never seen wages paid that good around here as we are now. So there's good paying jobs, big yeah. paying jobs. They're here. And there's a lot of them right now. There sure is. But you know, if you think about it, if everybody... That's supposed to be coming. No, they're supposed to come, but they're all waiting to see more people or the waiting for this or that. Then nobody's going to show up and they're going to miss it. True. <laughs> because they're all waiting but not yeah, missing what God be said. Over. You know, and at the end of the day, God moves through people. And if we're not doing what he's told us to do because we're waiting for somebody else to yeah. move first, then, you know, we're going to miss out on what God has for us. So we True. always have to do what God tells us to do. And unless God is the one putting the brakes on, we shouldn't put the brakes on. If God's told us to do something, we should just trust him and do it. Praise the Lord. He's got it all worked out. I was going to say, what do you think? Well, Pastor can sit home and be like, well, the people ain't here, Lord. I'm not coming to <laughs> preach until the church is packed out. Well, you've got to have those there that are doing what God calls you to do to bring the people in. True. Very true. Now, the $9 billion, I said billion. B I L L I O N, not million, billion. If you get that set in here like you're supposed to, we could buy the rest of the property we want to buy, and we can have houses on them all for you when you come. Well, you wouldn't have to rent. We could take care of that for you. Amen. <laughs> I mean, the money's not for us to yep. spend, it's for God on what He wants. Well,. <laughs> Like I was saying, all you got to do is look at when when uh, God had, when Moses sent out the spies to spy out the land, only two of them came back with a good report. That's right. If you're gonna, if we sit back and say, well, Lord, you know, this and this and that is going on, instead of looking at what God said, you're bringing an evil report. Wouldn't that be considered an evil report? It would. I mean, the one God did send in there. And he clearly stated that to us, God sent him. He come from a little bitty town, just over here, not too far, that yeah. would shock you he even had a good spirit-filled believer in that whole town. Amen. But he sure did. He yeah. sure did. Well, just like so Elijah. there's others out there, where are you? Yep. Yeah. It was just like in Elijah. He didn't think there's anybody else around. God told him there's 7,000. Yeah. Because they're hiding. We probably got enough seats, empty seats, to seat a hundred if you want to come Sunday. Amen. Come fill them up. Fill them up. Don't talk about how nobody's coming to church if you're not coming to By church. By then we can start back building on our building again. We're just waiting for the finances to come rolling in. See, yeah. the devil waited until we got to a place. That we only needed uh, three hundred thousand to build some more at that moment, and now we got to have three, three and a half million. <laughs> we got to have the whole amount now. <laughs> uh. 
Uh, Bobby and the boys from Georgia write, Mr. Prophet, will the mark of the beast be official before the first of the year or just before camp meeting in July? Thank you and God bless you. I still believe it will be just before a camp meeting. Even though we've had a little time going by between trying to get this back on. And now look how hard he's, we sat right here today. And my crew worked very faithful until they finally got it to work. We Amen. got people out there we knew they were waiting for us. We could hear them, but <laughs> they couldn't hear us. We had no sound. <laughs> True. But we're on, praise the Lord. Perry from West Virginia writes, Mr. Prophet, I can fully see now we cannot go before the mid. It's too late for pre-trib, and we do not go when Christ comes to stop the war. Thanks for helping me. God bless you and your ministry. You know, Perry, I shouldn't say this, but as for one, one prophet, a true prophet, to one that's supposed to be a prophet, when you get off on that stupid program you get on, telling people to send thousands of dollars and God's coming in, and you know, going to bless you. Gonna, why don't you stop your lying and go back to preaching and do what God's called you to do? That's my answer to you. Amen. J.B. Wentworth from Texas writes, Mr. Prophet, I am having feelings of giving away millions of my money. Is it time for us to transfer our money to the church? Thank you and God bless you. We're waiting for it. Send it. We're waiting. It's time. It's definitely time. Amen. Real bold today. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit different answers than what we gave last time, but to the point, this is what God wants you to hear. Praise the Lord. That's right, I guess. Telly from Oklahoma writes, Dear Mr. Prophet, I saw a vision of a large air tent, about 32,000 seats in a large field with parking all around it. I was to buy that for you. Did I see and hear right? Yes, you did. We, the field sits right here. Uh, right now it looks like it's got soybeans on it, but uh, it's here. It's here. Amen. Then at the far right end or the other side, I was to put up a prefab seven-room school for you. Is that possible? That's very, very possible. That land belongs to us. They tell us it's got another artesian well on it. So when we drop that well in and the sewer and the school, we'll be very, very well set. Amen. Uh, James from Jamestown writes, who will be the president when the Antichrist shows up? <laughs> uh, don't look for Trump, because if he is, it wouldn't help us. Not that we don't want Trump, we'd love to have him. But every day that goes by, things change. Now, they had all the proof that this was a phony election, as phony, and far more phony than we realized. You now it was controlled from places overseas as well as the United States. And the Supreme Court has never done nothing about it. Now you tell me why not? Isn't that their job? Sold out. Sold out, yeah. Mm. So you're getting different answers today. <laughs> Amen. Well, and you know, really, in reality, the Antichrist has been on the scene for a long time. He was in the scene. He was in the White House when Obama was there. He was in the White House when Trump was there. I mean, he's been more on the scene than you probably oh, yeah. realize. I mean, he was the one, and we told you on this program, he was the one that told President Obama what to do with ISIS. There was no plan for ISIS until he was there. Sure. So he's already had a big influence on that. Uh, the Assembly of God from Virginia writes, Mr. Prophet, how many more years till Jesus' return do you think it will be in our lifetime? Thank you for your time and effort of you and your ministry team. Well, I don't remember the answer we gave, I think it was two or three years, and that was only a couple weeks ago. Uh, well, it could be next year. I mean, the way things are falling together... Uh, we just had that huge earthquake. We had uh, a war going on right now. We got a whole bunch of stuff that's going on mm -hmm. right now. And, uh, you know, one thing about war, they're going to have to start manufacturing stuff for the war. 
Yep. And that means people are going back to work. They can't keep them from going to work whether they got a mask on or not. It would be more important to get the stuff done. And that should help a lot. <laughs> Amen. I tell you. Yes, no, we definitely see it coming short, and it can't hold off five yeah. or ten years. It's just not possible, not with it's everything not going possible. on. John Shorey from Arizona says, Dear Mr. Prophet, when will people finally wake up and stop thinking in years and start thinking in days when it comes to the catching away of the church? Yes, we may have two years before the church goes, but we'll, why they want to think of many more years and not less? <clears throat> I, I'm fully persuaded that a lot of good Christians don't want to go yet. That's sad. Yeah. I don't know why you're afraid of heaven. I mean, the more I hear about the heaven, the more I study about heaven, it's not going to be anything like you've been thinking. But the more we do, the more we prepare, the more we get ready, the great it's going to be for us. I just heard a guy this last night, I was listening to him, he was talking about generosity. And that's another thing Christians have a hard time with, some do. They can't give their brother a nickel. You know, family members will help, but strangers, no. And man, this guy here was telling, oh, I'd love to hear him talk, but he was talking about how he usually carries at least a hundred, hundred dollar bills every place he goes. Because he always finds people in need that he can give $100 bills to. I said, boy, that would be fun. I'd like to have a pocket full of $100 bills that, you know, you can get. But you'd have to, not people on welfare necessarily, because some of them are just on there to live. They're not trying to work. The Bible says if they don't work, don't feed them. So we shouldn't give them the $100 bills then. But there are people out there that are working hard. And they may be making mistakes on how to use their money because it seems like, man, my I know I was talking and, uh, and my wife said, is that the fourth vacation this year they had, you know? <laughs> I mean, because God's blessing you and giving you money doesn't mean you should be running around blowing it. It's not your money. It's God's money. Amen. So I, I, I don't know, you know. It seems like people just want to keep going the way they're going instead of uh, making time ready for her to go to heaven. <laughs> True. Well, if you think about it, look how how uh, they had to be begged to leave Sodom and Gomorrah. That the angel had to go and lead them out of there. He because sure did. Had to they didn't carry want to them out. Pick them up and carry them. Yep. Man, he just didn't want to go. And finally, they got him to go, and, and Lot's wife still liked it too much and looked back. Looked back, turned mm -hmm. into a pillar of salt. Now, this thing, if you go in the rapture and look back, you're probably going to find yourself right back here. I wouldn't doubt it. Don't look back to see the view. It's probably a beautiful view. But keep your eyes up, 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 look for that gate. Amen. Amen. Sally Two Shoes from Arizona says, Hi, Mr. Prophet. Is it true that people should no longer think of pre-trib rapture? Is it as far too late for that anymore? Thank you, and God bless you and your ministry. Tell Noel hi for me. As we said, we told Noel that, and she said hi. She's listening right now. But anyways, you're absolutely right. Anybody is still talking about or preaching about that we go out, you know, between the third and fourth chapter, of Revelation should have their head examined examine to see if they still got a brain. I mean, the last horse is riding. Yep. It's almost time for the fifth horse. <laughs> and the next horse is Jesus and us coming back after the rapture, three and a half years after the rapture, to stop the war. But the rest of the world was wiped out. Amen. 
You know, it's interesting that three and a half years isn't even a full presidential term. No. <laughs> you know, I, I think, too, that people just think it's going to get much worse. Well, how much worse do they want it to get? And we got that hurricane now coming. Yep. 16 years. God said he'd come back to Louisiana, and this was going to be far worse than anything they ever had. Mm. Yep. They haven't changed. This morning it says, what do they call it? The easy, the big easy? Mm -hmm. Well, big easy. Big going to hell group. <laughs> True. I think one of my favorite preachers right now lives just building a new church down there. I think, Lord, you're going to have to definitely protect him. Why do you ever want to go to that state? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't That's sure where reason. exactly he is. Uh, Kem from New Jersey writes, Mr. Prophet, why is Biden only sending a few troops into battle? Will they all get killed? Can America come back from the wreck he's done to us? Is your church going to come back to full size? Will you finish your new building before camp meeting? Thank you and God bless you. Uh, I'd like to say yes to all of them. <laughs> but he didn't. He sent more troops. People began to warn him. Mm -hmm. And then, then that didn't do no good. They all got wiped out. He did it too late. And now we had more Americans wiped out and killed. And normally, you know, if they only killed one or two a few years back, they'd have declared open warfare and sent everybody over. Mm -hmm. Well, you we could drop the bomb today. That would end it quick. That's what I'd do if I was president. I wouldn't mess around with getting troops killed. I'd just start dropping. Not that tonic bomb. They got ones bigger than that. I'd drop the bigger ones. It, 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 it'd be over. It'd be the new corning glass. <laughs> True. Uh, <clears throat> Roger from the PA area says, Dear Mr. Prophet, do we have anything as fast as the new Russian sub? Is Russia really ready for war? Thank you. God bless you and your ministry there. I haven't heard of anything as fast as that sub. Nothing. Nothing. They, they have a missile that they can fire that would come over and blow New York City off the map and return back to Russia almost before we knew it happened. <laughs> it's that fast. Yeah, the only sub I know and, that disappears uh, faster than that's the one that's on my plate. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to see everybody return. I mean... You know, I thought for a while it looked like we were going to do that. And the devil, you know, the minute God sent us the new man. And we let people hear his testimony because they've been warned he's going to overflow our church with all these wonderful 100% sold out Christians. And it'll almost look like people, more people quit coming and then weren't coming. <laughs> And you think, oh, brother, I mean, don't they believe this? They, they see it coming to pass. They, they hear the testimony. Everything is proving true. Uh, yep. I don't know. They just don't seem to want to believe. Well, when God uh, gave Elijah the word about the rain, he went and said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. He sure did. <laughs> and they didn't see nothing. But then a little cloud appeared out of nowhere, just like a man's hand. Next thing you know, it was pouring out. Yep. And then the most unusual thing happened at that time. You might have forgot this. But Elijah took off running. And he outrun the fastest chariot in the world. Amen. Now, uh, the rain coming was hard to believe. It'd be a lot harder to believe some man running so fast he could outrun the fastest chariot in the world. And how many miles away were they that he ran? Yep. 
Today, I'll tell you, when, when God does, it's going to happen fast. And you may wake up one morning yeah. and realize, hey, I missed the rapture. Nobody, I can't get all anybody from my church. They're all gone. Yeah. Well, why was you in church? You probably would have went with them. <laughs> and God's going to make even bigger miracles than that these days because the chariots are faster than they were back then. They sure are. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> so be running even faster than that. I don't know how fast the fastest car will go, but I've heard them go three, four hundred miles an hour. And they, I know they got them faster than that, but I don't know how fast. Outrunning the jet. I never, never drove one, so I can't tell you the one that fast. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fast. Well, we made it through our questions this morning. I know we uh, spent a lot more time on. Our last video, um, but you couldn't really see much other than just uh, hearing us. We will be back in a couple of weeks with your questions next time. Amen. We wanted to get on and get so you to answer them your questions. We're fired up. Send them we, in. <laughs> we will uh, be back on in a couple more weeks, and uh, we will strive to get all the bugs worked out ahead of time. We thought we had them worked out. We tested it last week, and it was working. We came this morning, and it didn't want to work. But we still made it on anyways. We got you the answers to your questions that you've been waiting for. So we're here for you. We're here to help you. Write to us, and uh, we will answer your questions. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so I guess with that, we will see you again in a couple more weeks on A Talk with the Prophet. We look forward to uh, your questions, and we look forward to sharing with you um, everything God has uh, has for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Until yep. next time, God bless. One thing we did do, we got done on time. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> we didn't start on time, but we got done on time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, boy. Our new slogan's going to be, can you hear me now? <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless. Amen.